Few fighters in the UFC have captured the heart of the fans like Robert the Reaper Whitaker. Affectionately given the nickname Bobby Knuckles by his supporters, Whitaker has gone from just another guy on the roster in his welterweight days to one of the most beloved champions in recent history. And with another shot at UFC Gold at UFC 271, his book still has room for several more chapters. This is the story of Robert Whitaker. Born in Auckland, New Zealand in 1990, Robert John Whitaker was born into a household where his father was Australian but had been born in Europe, while his mother was of a Maori and Samoan background. At the age of seven, his father took him and his brother to a karate school, where Whitaker would stay until he achieved his black belt after eight years. While the possibility of competing in rugby league was always there in Australia, Whitaker remained down the martial arts route and switched to the art of Hapkido. Training at the gym run by Henry Perez in southern Sydney, Whitaker's hand was forced into MMA when Perez decided to change the school into an MMA gym. Luckily for Bobby Knuckles, he fell in love with the sport, and his training in karate and hapkido had prepared him for this switch, so he decided to focus his attention here and leave rugby behind. Whitaker turned professional in 2009 and began fighting on the local Australian circuit. By the midpoint of 2012, he'd built a record of 9-2, only fighting once outside of Australia and winning all of his fights via finish. It was at this point that his coach Henry Perez would register him for the new season of The Ultimate Fighter. Building on the competitive rivalry in cricket between England and Australia, the latest season would see teams from each country go head-to-head -head under the coaching of Ross Pearson and George Stoderopoulos. After winning his two fights on the show via first-round knockout, he advanced to the live finale where he beat Brad Scott via unanimous decision, becoming the welterweight winner. Whitaker's first four fights in the UFC after the tough finale were at 170 pounds, where he unfortunately had a rough start, going 2-2 two and two inside the octagon. While he earned a finish in his first fight and a unanimous decision win over Mike Rhodes, Whitaker was also beaten by Court McGee and TKO'd in the first round by a surging Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Following his first four fights in the promotion, Whitaker decided to jump up to the middleweight division. The move instantly started to pay dividends for him, as by the end of April 2016, he had gone 4-0 as a middleweight. During that stretch, he secured two finishes over Clint Hester and Brad Tavares, and two decision wins against Uriah Hall and Rafael Natal. It was at this point that the Australian and New Zealand fans who had followed the Reaper would finally get their homecoming. In his first main event, Whitaker would welcome Derek Brunson to Melbourne. With Brunson on a 5-0 win streak of his own with some devastating finishes along the way, this was a good test for Whitaker at this point in his career. In one of the best one-round fights in UFC history, he stopped Brunson via TKO in the final minute, a finish that was met by thousands of screaming fans. In April of 2017, the next big opportunity came his way, a fight with one of the most dangerous and legendary fighters in the division, Ronaldo Jacare Souza. A grappler of the very highest level, Jacare Souza was always one or two fights away from title contention due to his prestige, and Whitaker went into the fight looking to make a statement. Unable to take Whitaker down, the Reaper landed a sniper-like head kick to put Jacare away Way in the second round, pulling off the biggest win of his career. With middleweight champion Michael Bisping recovering from an injury, an interim title fight was put together between two of the top contenders in the division. After a devastating flying knee knockout of Chris Weidman, Yoel Romero was hands down the scariest fighter at 185 pounds, and it would be his ferocious power and wrestling pedigree versus the heart and speed of Bobby Knuckles. The Reaper met the Soldier of God in July in 2017 at UFC 213 and once again rose to the occasion, producing his most well-rounded and technical performance to date. Able to stuff Romero's takedowns and outstrike the Cuban at range, Whitaker's speed and footwork proved to be the difference maker in the fight. Despite being crowned the interim champion in July, Bisbing instead defended his title against George St. Pierre at UFC 217, a fight which GSP won via rear naked choke. However, after winning the gold, St. Pierre decided to vacate the belt shortly after, which resulted in Whitaker being promoted to undisputed champion. Unfortunately, injuries and private issues would become a recurring theme at this stage in Whitaker's career, and it significantly slowed down his title reign. His first defense was set for UFC 221, but a serious injury caused by staph infection forced Whitaker to pull out. In response, an interim title fight was booked between Yoel Romero and Luke Rockhold, which Romero ultimately won via knockout. However, since Romero had missed weight prior to the fight, he was ineligible to win the interim belt, but his performance still earned him another shot at Whitaker in June of 2018. Once again, Romero missed weight and was declared ineligible to win the title, though the fight still went ahead as planned. After his injuries had slowed his momentum, Robert Whitaker had the biggest test of his fighting career to date at UFC 225. Despite Romero landing devastating shots throughout the contest, Whitaker's heart and toughness allowed him to persevere, picking up a razor-close split decision win that is still debated to this day. 
Following two victories over Romero, Whitaker was set for a new challenge in the form of Kelvin Gastelum. After a stint as coaches on The Ultimate Fighter, they were set to clash at UFC 234, but the champ was forced to pull out once again due to a hernia just hours before the event. Because of this, the co-main event between Anderson Silva and Israel Adesanya was promoted to the main event. On a night where Whitaker should have finally received his homecoming as champion in Melbourne, it was Israel Adesanya who made waves as the next big thing in the middleweight division. After beating Anderson Silva in February of 2019, Adesanya defeated Kelvin Gastelum in a Fight of the Year candidate at UFC 236 to claim the interim title. Once Whitaker had fully recovered, the UFC returned to Melbourne to put on a super fight for the region, creating a title unification bout between Robert Whitaker and Israel Adesanya for UFC 243. Unfortunately, this wasn't the welcome home that Whitaker deserved as a champion, as he produced a performance that fans couldn't have expected from him at this stage in his career. During the fight, Whitaker was outclassed in the striking exchanges by Adesanya and was ultimately finished via knockout in the second round. The build-up to the fight had left fans split between the two men, and after Adesanya seemed uninterested in a rematch with Whitaker, it was time for the Reaper to begin his climb back to the top. With his injuries and personal struggles seemingly dealt with, Whitaker returned to the middleweight division in peak form. His road back to the title began on Fight Island in July of 2020, where he would earn a unanimous decision win over Darren Till. His next opponent would be the division's newest threat, power puncher Jared Cannonier, who he beat in comfortable fashion just a few months later. While Adesanya looked to move up a weight class and challenge for a second world title, Whitaker continued to prove himself as one of the best middleweights in the UFC. His next fight came against a contender that had pushed Adesanya further than anyone ever had, and who Whitaker had been scheduled to face before. In April of 2021, Whitaker won another comfortable and dominant decision against Kelvin Gastelum to cap off his journey back to the top, a period that had seen him prove himself against the middleweight's elite. After making light work of Italy's Marvin Vittori, Adesanya knew the rematch had to come next, since the two had beaten all other middleweight contenders. While the rematch unfortunately can't happen in front of their home crowd, Adesanya versus Whitaker 2 has a far greater narrative this time around. At UFC 271, Israel Adesanya can solidify himself as undeniably the best fighter at middleweight and check off cleaning out the division. For Robert Whitaker, this is the most important fight of his life, a second shot at proving that he isn't just second best. All of his work since UFC 243 has been building towards getting this opportunity. Right now, it's sink or swim against one of the most impressive champions in UFC history. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to our channel. Apart from that, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.